Hello class 11, uh, science students. So we are done with the first unit that is ecology. It, it was a very broad chapter. So we have come to the end of ecology. Now we are starting unit 2 that is pollution. So yesterday I sent you the note on the first part of the chapter that is correlation between pollution and development. How these two terms, when a nation tries to develop, how it also brings pollution along with development. So these two things, uh, development of a nation and pollution, they go hand in hand. You cannot avoid pollution if a country is planning to develop. So uh, if you check the note that I gave you, it says pollution and development are linked. In the process of development, uh, in the process of development, nations they are trying to rely on the exploitation of resources in order to build up revenue. And when they exploit resource, when any nation is exploiting resource, what is happening is it is definitely bringing in economic advantage. That means the country is growing economically. But on the other side, what is happening is the advantage is that we are polluting the environment and that pollution comes in the form of air pollution, soil pollution, water pollution, there might be noise pollution. So whenever a country extracts natural resources, when you extract, say you cut down trees or you build up industries or you are working on some project, the thing that is not taken into account is that while you are doing these things to make your country progress economically, on the other side, we are actually polluting the environment. So these two terms, development and pollution, they go hand in hand. Uh, I have given you an example in the second paragraph, what happened with the Niger Nigeria Delta? They started capitalization of petroleum, oil. And when they started capitalization of petroleum, what happened is when they started exporting oil to other countries, there were a lot of oil spills. There was petroleum spilled in the oceans. And what happens when petroleum spills in the ocean? How are we damaging the environment? When petroleum is there on the ocean, it destroys the aquatic life of the ocean. The entire water body is polluted and all the aquatic organisms suffer because sunlight and oxygen cannot penetrate into the water. So we were trying to, Nigeria was trying to develop by exporting petroleum to other countries but it resulted in pollution of the oceans, right? And then even if we talk of developing nations like India, we also exploit a lot of natural resources. And we are exploiting the natural resources for our own benefit. But still, we need to understand that we are benefiting on one side, but on the other side, we are creating a lot of pollution, which goes unnoticed even by the government, right? And then what is the other necessity for uh, development is uh, construction of industries. Now when we say construction of industries, they are heavily dependent on fossil fuels. All the industries, they depend on fossil fuels. Now if an industry which is actually working for the growth of the nation by producing a number of commodities for us but what we have to remember on the other side we are getting the products but because the industries are utilizing a lot of fossil fuel that is coal and petroleum they are polluting the air in a very very bad and an irreversible way right and uh, because the nations are only bothered about development economic development how we compete with the other countries how we can make the GDP of our country grow how can we increase the gross national income? How can we increase the gross domestic product? The concentration is this side. So our focus does, does not fall on what is happening with the environment and how it is getting polluted. The air, the water, the soil, how all the commodities on which life is dependent is getting polluted, right? So what does the United States Energy Information Administration report? It says that uh, by the year 2040, by the time we approach 2040, 
the world will be 65% of the world's energy consumption will be uh, based on fossil fuel as compared to 54% that was in 2010. Now, because these, uh, all these countries depend on fossil fuels, we can be very sure that pollution is also going to increase tenfold in the coming decades, right? So, in, it, it is very inevitable that such an increase in pollution with regard to that of air, water, soil, it will increase and once that pollution increases class, uh, there will be fatalities, there will be death, there will be a lot of sickness of people, right? So, this is how uh, development is related to pollution. They go hand in hand. The more you develop, the more you are creating pollution. So, after this in your chapter, uh, they have the, you have to study about air pollution, water pollution, noise pollution, right? So, uh, under air pollution, you have to study the concept of global warming, how air pollution is leading to global warming, then you have to understand how air pollution leads to acid rain and how air pollution is leading to the depletion of the ozone layer. So these are the three outcomes of air pollution. There is global warming, there is the depletion of ozone layer and there is acid rain which comes because the air is heavily polluted with carbon dioxide, with methane, with nitrous oxides, with sulfur dioxide. All these gases have so badly contaminated the air because of burning of fossil fuels that the entire globe, not one nation, but the entire globe is facing the problem of global warming, acid rain and depletion of ozone layer, right? So when we talk of what is global warming, uh, most of you must be knowing that a global warming is the increase in the temperature of the earth. Now what is happening? Uh, let me tell you in very simple language, when we burn fossil fuels, right? When we are burning coal, what is getting released into the environment is carbon dioxide, nitrous oxides and nitrogen dioxide gases. And these gases, they envelop the earth. They remain in the earth. Now, if, if we talk of only one gas, say carbon dioxide, uh, when we talk of only one gas, carbon dioxide, what takes carbon dioxide away from the environment is trees. And what have we done to that is we have decreased the number of trees because of deforestation. So what happens is when excess of carbon dioxide or sulfur dioxide when they get released into the environment, they remain in the troposphere for a very long time because they cannot be absorbed because the greenery is not there around us, right? So this carbon dioxide gas, it remains like an envelope there and then the rays that come from the sun, they penetrate and they reach the earth but when they try to get reflected back, when they try to get re-radiated back, they are trapped by the carbon dioxide layer and the heat gets trapped inside the earth, right? Now when this heat gets trapped inside the earth, which should actually have gone into space, the temperature of the earth starts rising. Right? And uh, it is noticed by the scientists that almost 1.5 to 5.5 degrees centigrade every year the earth's temperature is rising. Right? So this phenomenon is referred to as global warming, that is the increase in the temperature of the earth which has led to disasters such as melting of uh, glaciers, the melting of polar ice caps. Uh, and when this water melts and comes down, the sea level has been increasing. Almost 70 centimeter of uh, sea level increases. And because of the sea level increase, there will be inundation of the coastal areas, the low-lying areas, the areas which lie near the sea. They might get submerged under water if this temperature is not controlled. Then people are facing heat strokes, 
There are lots of ailments, migratory birds, they are losing their root because the entire globe has become warm. These are the effects of global warming, right? So this has happened because we have very badly contaminated the air in the process of development, right? And, uh, and then we have acid rain, uh, the same gases which are there in the air, the CO2, the SO2, which is there in the air, when they mix with the atmospheric water vapor, they form acids like sulfur dioxide with water, it forms sulfuric acid. Carbon dioxide forms carb uh, carbolic acid. So when these gases are combining with the water, they are forming acids and they are coming down in the form of rain which is called acid rain. So I will, sh I will show this to you uh, with the proper um, uh, definitions. I will send you the notes first and then in my next lecture I will be explaining I will be explaining to you acid rain and ozone layer depletion with proper diagrams. Okay, so you please go through the notes that I have given you. Please go, go through global warming greenhouse effect and I will be explaining to you acid rain and the depletion of ozone layer with proper examples. I will show it to you, demonstrate it to you in the next class. Thank you class.